Hello guys and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, Yuri and Natsuki got into a fight, uh, but everything turned out to be okay-ish. We came back today, talked a bit with Sayori, Yuri, and Natsuki, and once Monica showed up, club activities went back to normal, and we're about to hang out with Sayori, so let's get into it. <clears throat> MC! MC! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up? Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, uh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with MC to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'll be happy to go with him. Aw, uh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find a post. See if you can find poster paper too. Okay. Okay. Ready, MC? Yep. Let's go. Sayori and I exit the clump club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to a mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing on the f for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're, we're gonna do a poetry performance. A uh, performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Uh, that sounds... kinda dull? MC, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. Can you read my mind? It's not about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say, the lines of the poem, like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I, I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited! This festival is going to be so much fun! Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey MC, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She, she's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy v vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have here. Crayons! Sayori pulls a full box of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color! Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Kya! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, wow, 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 wow. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. It's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. 
a bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. MC... Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to... I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run off out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least I was, they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori... here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, MC. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways, like I usually felt behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did, but sometimes I, when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt, I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump, and I would start crying real hard, <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could, you would try really hard to get me to stop crying, it was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I... really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kinda like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. MC... I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. T don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess, when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for this long. Really? Maybe you're right. MC, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess that we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Good luck with that. Just gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Uh, ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Oh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start sharing our poems. Eh? Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about 
I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway, <laughs> were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right... Eh? Sayori, frant Sayori frantically glances around herself. I, I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, MC. Ah, uh, well, Sayori... I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? I guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Alright, poem sharing. Let's start off with Sayori once more. MC, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh? I'm not hiding anything. But, your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how she likes something. But I don't, I don't think that's it. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? Wah, 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 wah. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're really a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. I guess we have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori starts fidgeting with her pencil between her hands. Hey, MC. Will you give me your poem? I kinda wanna keep it. Huh? Why? Because... Well... It's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Ugh. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Ah, I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped. Being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S -s sorry It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk bes beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. <clears throat> this poem is called Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all of our other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps, it doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more, my friends look through my locked front door. 
Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica... Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> Don't get too ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Next we have Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Whew. Huh? Whew, what? Well, anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take as a win. I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Ah, 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 ah. Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. I kind of went into papyrus for a little bit there. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me not to keep completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but... But honestly, how can someone so... Uh, uh, fluffy, spend so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she probably would just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem? Here. <clears throat> this poem is called, Amy Likes Spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start liking spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. Doesn't matter if she keeps it private. Doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. And the world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course! It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. 
Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Sometimes, that thing you're afraid of people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that, but that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Two down, two to go. Next we have Yuri. Um... Are you- Oh no. Oh crap, okay. Okay, I'm gonna let this play out, but if something bad happens, then I'll let you know. Are you still mad at me? Huh? For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you... you prefer her writing over mine. Ugh, oh, okay, so this is something that I mentioned in a previous episode, where if you go too much on... Natsuki's side, Yuri will hate you, and if you go too much on Yuri's side, Natsuki will hate you. I was hoping that I was neutral this time around, but I think I must have picked too many words that Natsuki liked over words that Yuri liked. Uh, so, crap. I don't think we'll get to see Yuri's second and third poem. Because I think she doesn't want to share with you if you're too much on uh, Natsuki's side. God damn it. Okay. Well, doesn't matter too much. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things that I want to keep inside come out and make me make people hate me. So, please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair when you But it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri. Please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sighed to myself. All I could do is accept that that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide that request. Just Monica's left, so I'll go ahead and talk to her. Hi again, MC. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take, I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. Can you tell Yuri that I don't hate her, please? I want to read her poems, and she refuses to show them to me. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want me to share what you wrote for today? Or want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Okay, I'm sure someone's already made this art, but I would love to see... MC and Sa like fan art of MC and Sayori in uh, Batman and Robin costumes. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do, too. All right, let's take a look. <clears throat> This one is called, Save Me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. 
flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless load me hmm it's even more abstract than your last one huh <laughs> I guess it's that's just the way I write I'm sorry if you don't like it no I never said that it's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before I guess I kind of like playing with my space on the paper choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem it's almost like magic the way I wrote these lines the way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what's, what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know what you what when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. This is going to be the end of the episode here. We went ahead and shared our poems with everyone. We even hung out with Sayori this episode, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!